somebody was a thief. It's possible that this thief will repent and will become a good person. But it's not you who teach him. He have to go through it himself and he make decision by himself. And when he make decision, this person is good to go. But if you go and marry a thief and you try to teach the thief to stop being a thief, 99% you are wasting your time because he's not convinced. You are trying to force him to stop. He's a thief. A cheater. You know, you marry a man, you know that he'd like to, to be with many women. Obviously, he likes himself very much. He thinks he is so handsome. He thinks that women, one woman is not good for him. And then you think if you marry him, you can teach him how to be decent. You are, until one day he repent. But you are risking. If he himself convince himself that he will repent, he will never do it, then I believe it. But you teach him. Good luck. Same time for intelligence. Can you teach somebody to be smart? Good luck with that. Uh -uh. Uh, Boris, how Muhammad was before he became prophet? Nothing the same. But when he become before he announced himself a prophet, you know he was a poor man. He married Khadija for the sake of her money, and then the money of Khadija made him important person, and he started thinking about different position. Uh, what do you think about long distance relationship? Well, you just call it long distance. Long distance, <laughs> long distance relationship. It's mean there is no distance. That's mean you don't have, you don't have relationship. You know, in order to uh, to have relationship, I will tell you a story. There's a person who used to come to my uh, chat in Paltok. He met a woman from England, and this guy is a Christian, by the way. And I think he is even a Syrian. I forgot, really. Anyway, so this guy, he met a girl in the chat, in Paltok. And uh, he talked with her every day. She is good. She is decent. He sent her gifts. Almost every week he sent her a gift. This guy is going crazy for her. And then one day he decided to make a surprise. And she is from a conservative family. That's why she cannot open her camera. And the man, he liked it. Oh man, she don't like to open her camera. He said, even for a second, she refused. She said, my dad will kill me. <laughs> anyway, so uh, he decided, because he sent her a gift, she gave him her, her address, right? So uh, he decided to make a surprise for her. He told his family he's going to go and ask for her hand. He want to marry her. So he bought a ring. He went all the way to England. He saw the address, he go to the address, in the front of the address, there is a phone, he call, you know, and then he see from the window, the woman is answering. The woman she is talking, she does not look like the woman she, he was talking to her all, all this year. I mean, he can see her, you know, this is the address in the front of, she, he's in the street, you know, he can see from the window, she is speaking in the phone. She is a woman in her 70. Uh, and the woman he is coming to marry, this guy is like 32 years old. She is like supposedly 26, 27. Uh, so what he discovered later, that the picture she sent him, it was her daughter. So the woman is real, but not the one who spoke to him. The one who spoke to him, it was the mother. So she sent her daughter a picture, and... Uh, <laughs> So he hang up first time because when she answered, he heard her voice, but this is not her. So he called again. The same person answered the phone. He can see, you know. And then he told her, well, I am here. She said, well, you are here where? He said, I'm here in front of your house. She looked from the window and now he is sure <laughs> that's her, you know. Yeah, hi, honey. How are you? Etc. I miss you, etc. He said, I have a surprise for you. He said, what surprise? I said, I'm here. She looked from the window. She said, where? You know? And now he is 100% because she confirmed that he's, he's in the beginning. He said, maybe they have the same voice. I mean, come on. She is her mother. Maybe, you know? Yeah. Maybe this is her mother. Yeah, this poor guy, he spent a year or so in love with this uh, lady, supposedly, who is young, close to his age. 
he is a decent man, he want to get married, he sent her gifts, he told his family, and he, he prepared them, you know, he told them, I will tell you when we're the wedding, uh, prepare yourself to fly to England, blah, 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 you know. So long distance relationship, there's a lot of garbage can go through it, because you will not know the person for real, who is he or who is she, and they can lie to you, and they can have a 10 boyfriend, and you are just one more, or the opposite, the man, he can lie to you if you are a girl, he can maybe be married, and he claimed to be single, etc. So long distance relationship is very dangerous. Yeah. I just wanted to warn you, just be careful. But doesn't mean everyone you speak to in the internet is not decent, no. But you have to be careful, you have to be sure. You know, that this is the person, you know, he or she are not lying about their identity, about their uh, their status as married, single, they have kids, uh, they are really, you have to, you have to be smart. <clears throat> Ibadi Islam, I don't know what Ibadi Islam, what is that? What Ibadi? <clears throat> They are using a word I don't know what it is. Yeah. Did Muhammad love his stepdaughter Fatima or did he hurt her? We don't know. Based on what the Muslim they say, he treated her as a daughter. We don't know. There's not, you see, remember, the Muslims is the one who wrote the books about Muhammad, right? So they will not write something bad about their prophet. At least as long as they, they think it's bad. If, if they think it's bad, they will not write it. So we don't know. We know only what Muslims they say. Azad, he said, Muta is halal in the Bible. Hmm. Okay. So let us say for the sake of argument, muta is halal in the Bible, as you claim, which is false. But that will not change anything, that your God is encouraging prostitution. I mean, this is how silly the Mohammedan are. Let us say there is, you are a whore, and now you say to somebody else, your neighbor, oh, I have my neighbor as a whore too. But that not, doesn't change the fact that you are a whore. Oh... <laughs> uh, what do you think about love is love, things that LGBT people use? Uh, you know, I mean, uh, uh, love, uh, first of all, uh, when when people use the word love, I can speak to somebody who is from the LGBT because they have their own philosophy and they have their own logic. But for us as a Christian, love have to be uh, uh, something separated from sexuality. Love is not sexual. Love is not something sexual. Which means you can be in love with the woman, and because you love her, you will never sleep with her, unless you marry her. You know? So like, because now she is your wife, you sleep because simply with her, because she is your wife, and you want to have family, you have children, etc. But love is not sexual. Love has nothing to do with sex. The same as the mother, she loved her child. Is she going to sleep with him? Her boy or her daughter? No. So love is something pure, have nothing to do with expectation or physical things. So you can be in love with a person even you don't even know. Maybe you never met. And you know you, and you know you will never touch. And you know you will never see. But you are in love with that person. That is a love with no expectation. That is a true love. The second we have expectation of the love to come back or to come back to us, then this is not a love. This is a, uh, this is a selfish love. Like, you know, I love you because when I look at you, I feel good. That's mean I am the one who feels good. <laughs> I have a benefit of looking at you. I'm not in love with you if you are ugly. <laughs> you know what I mean? If you are like 
I have a benefit, like why I have a tree in front of my window? Because I love to look at this tree. But am I really in love with the tree? If the tree, the same tree, lose her leaves, what I would do with the tree? If this tree died, but still can stay there, you know, tree not, not like a human, they will not like collapse right away. Because they take years. If the tree die, I will cut the tree because now it is ugly. Obviously, I'm not in love with the tree. I'm in love with the look of the tree when the tree was vibrant, full of life. Right? True love have nothing to do even with life. Even a person who died, you still love the person. Are you with me? You know, as I do, I don't have time for your stupid man. You know, if you are a man, call me. Just get lost. Son of Muta. Your prophet as a child molester, you are talking about, you know, keep insulting. We are just letting you speak. But you are a you know, certain, you know, like donkey. Jesus said, if a man, he wish a woman in his eyes and she is not his, he committed fornication. This is what Jesus said. And you say we are allowed to do Muta, you coward. Shame on you. Black stone kisser, pagan. So love have nothing to do with physical. So anyone who understands love as something physical, he do not even know what love is. Do we understand? Love have nothing to do with physical touch. It's not. Actually, when there is something physical, it's mean you have to be careful that mostly, maybe, or let's say most likely, your love is not really love. You know, if a man he is in love with the, his, uh, let's say he's married, you know, not he's not talking about a woman, she is a, a girlfriend, a wife, and he love her. He keeps saying, I love you. But then this woman, she get older. And now she have wrinkles. She gain weight. She is not the same as when he met her first time. If he stay in love with her, even though now she have wrinkles, she change, and he will change too. But selfish person, he see only the other person changing. If he's still in love with her, that's mean he really love her. If he... See now, he starts seeing the wrinkles. That's mean he never loved her. He loved her face. He loved her body. He loved her look when she was young. He did not love her. Uh, Zawas, you can call me maybe next time I go live. I'm not really in the mood to take calls no more. We waited here for hours and nobody called us. And now you decide to say to call me. But anyway, if you have a question, post it in the chat. I will answer you. Yeah. Uh, Benjamin saying, I am a great admirer of your knowledge and uh, humor. Do you have a plan to start online course uh, for next generation of Christian uh, apologists? My friend, we are doing here a real, real time course. Uh, because you see, apologist is the best apologist is the one who take you to the laboratory. This is what uh, scientists they do, right? If you learn science, if you learn, if you learn about chemistry, and you never practice to mix uh, chemical together, you know, then you learn nothing. It's just words. It's just numbers. You know, you never practice it. You never saw it. So here we do that. We have we have you in the laboratory. So if you are a person who's willing to learn, you are in the right place. I do not need to make a course. Learn how I speak to Muslims. Learn how I direct the conversation. Learn how we lead the conversation, learn how I get the reference, learn how to learn the reference, learn how to save them, learn how to, uh, you know, to connect the dots together. So we are doing course every day. Uh, 
Do you have an answer for old miracle in the Quran? Is the the thing holding me back from leaving Islam alone forever? My friend, first of all, there is nothing is called uh, mathematic miracles. That will be a, a very silly miracle. I can make now a book, uh, and the book have certain pattern. That does not make me God. As an example, have you ever heard of a book called Yellow Pages? Yellow Pages. Have you ever heard of a book called, uh, uh, you know, like those dictionary for for books? There's a dictionary, you know but have a certain way to find words. Is that a miracle really? It's based in mathematics, like, you know, but how that can be from God? Anyone, you know, can do those things. Is that is that possible? God, when we speak about miracle, is not about how many times God, he says Satan. I can write a book now saying 60 times Satan and 60 times God. How that can be a miracle? However, even the numbers the Muslim they give you are absolutely false and fabricated. And I have many videos about it. Tons of videos. As an example, miracle number 19. They say to you, it's based on what? Based on chapter number 1, verse number 1. They say the first chapter, 19, have 19. Verse number 1, have 19 letters. You, we, know, we, we calculate them. We will find ourselves ending with 23, 24. Where is 21? Where is the 19? So this is a false hypocrite calculation. And they can fool people who do not know Arabic with it. Even actually Muslim themselves, even Muslim website, Sheikh's website, they go against those miracles. Do you remember uh, uh, the dad, he made a book. The dad, he made a book. And then the dad, he was asked by... Uh, uh, one of his fan, you know, he was doing. Uh, let me see if I can the video, see the video. Uh, did that. They ask him about Rashad Khalifa. Actually, right now you can go and search for this video. Miracle 19, Rashad Khalifa exposed. The dad, he took everything in Rashad Khalifa book and he put it in his book. Everything. Then Rashad Khalifa, when he announced himself to be the messenger of Allah, suddenly, the dad, he spoke against the miracle 19, he said there's a flaws in it. It's not right. So why you put it in your book? He said, I thought that this would be good to convince Muslims and non-Muslims about Islam. So how you know that it have a flaws, which mean have errors, and then you accept it to be part of your book? Watch the video. It's just a minute. This is how hypocrite they are. They take it even they knew that this scientific miracle, mathematic miracle, is absolutely false. He added in his book, and he said why? He said because I thought... It's good to use it to convince Muslims and non-Muslims. So he knew it's false, and now he want to convince you of Islam because it will help. <laughs> so what is the miracle? No dignity, no honesty. You see, we were talking about love, right? Like love between men and women. Here there is love, love of what? A love of the devil. A person who loves God, he don't lie. Especially about his God. Don't you think it should be a big sin to fabricate things my God did not say to make you convinced about my God? Don't you think this is a big sin? What kind of logic I have? So in order to convince you to become a Christian, I'm going to lie to you which means I'm lying about my God. Which means I'm going to go to hell so I can save you. What kind of logic this logic is? Faisal saying, where you got uh, the knowledge from? 
my friend, first of all, uh, knowledge, uh, you know, you read, you learn, you teach yourself. However, there is something very important. I believe that, you know, when, when you decide to work with God, God, He supports you. He inspires you. He gives you wisdom you don't have. It's not only just knowledge, you know. Uh, I believe that God is involved in our life and He leads us and uh, we believe that the Holy Spirit, uh, you know, when we speak good, that's uh, God's words, you know. It's not me. Because no good in man. The, man, the good man still is not good. <clears throat> Anything else? Yeah, you can go later when you have time and search for this video. Miracles 19, Rashad Khalifa. Uh, imagine somebody, he take my books, he take quotation from my books, he believe in it. A later Christian prince, he say something they don't like. Suddenly he don't agree with it. Who is the Khalifa? Well, ISIS, they, their, their caliphate, he died, and now they announce a new caliphate. <laughs> All right. Uh, Anything else? Yeah, love, you know, many people, they have wrong. <clears throat> Make a video about Mahdi. No problem. I mean, the next time maybe we go on live, remind me of this topic, we can talk about Mahdi. Uh, you know, people, they have wrong understanding of what love is. Uh, a human being sometimes he act like a, like, like a, an animal, you know, like a program insect, and uh, he deceive himself with love, like you know, uh, rabbit he love a carrot. <laughs> so don't be the rabbit, my friend. We are human. We are, we have heart for real. Uh, we you know, don't be the rabbit who who is in love with the carrot. Don't be in love with the physical. Be spiritual in love. When you are, when your love is a spiritual, your love always is noble, is high, is strong, and will never fail. This is why the Bible says God, love never fail. So who fail? People fail. People fail love. It's not love who fail them. It's not love who fail. Love is a very wonderful word. So people, they change. People, they cheat. People, they promise and they don't keep their promise. People, they say things they don't mean. People, they say things now. They mean now, but now they mean. Not they all the time. So they are not really in love with you. So it's not love the problem. It is the people. People don't, they are not, they are not even mature. They are like kids. They see a Barbie in the display. They want to grab the Barbie. And then after they get the Barbie, they play with it for five minutes. And then they throw it in the ground. And then they leave it all day. And then another kid, he came to play with the Barbie. Suddenly he want to get the Barbie back. Human being never change. He is just a growing kid. Some of us, we overcome our child time, which means we can be growing men and growing women. But many of us, we are growing men, but we are still kids. We think like one, we act like one, and we die as one. Yet, as a look, we look like men. But in reality, you are just a kid. <clears throat> this is why you see, actually, a human being, when he gets older, he become more kid. <laughs> he go to the infant time. So he wanna, you will see a woman, she is really old, she is now, she wanna wear a very short skirt. 
and the guy is very old and now he want to uh, drive a car with uh, sport open no roof you know why because he want to live he want to think he is young he want to convince himself he's a teenage he, he's trying to grab time back you know like time is running I'm like I'm soon I'm, I might die so I want to be a teenage again because he is not mature yet uh, that's a sand ending no, that's not that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah you know this is why i say the best joy in life is the brain the brain especially if the brain have have a special support like you have a you have faith <clears throat> so if you have faith and you have a brain you enjoy your life doesn't matter how old are you because number one joy it happened in the brain you can be a person who cannot move you lost your ability to move if your brain is fine you enjoy life you will be fine so learn how to use your brain but don't abuse it and learn how to be decent and how to love for the sake of love not for the sake of taking those who love you because they want to take something from you or they expect something from you they never love you Um, I'm questioning myself when Jesus come back to earth. The face of, we don't know. Uh, you know, the Lord, he will come the same as like a thief in the middle of the night. Uh, and there is a reason for that. So people will not be aware and they will not repent, you know, at the last moment. So the one who deserved to be saved will be saved. But I don't, uh, I'm not worried about when he will come back. Uh, you know, there's no need to worry. Because you know it's it's his it's his time, it is his decision, and uh, it's going to be as he wants. So why I want to think about something not in my hand anyway. But anyway, as a believer, I have a trust on him that I will be with him one day. And time goes so fast. Yesterday you are born, tomorrow you are dead. A billion years from now, or a thousand years, two thousand years from now, a million years from now. Judgment day, you will be with the Lord if you're a believer. Time goes so fast. Time means nothing for God, and time will be meaning nothing to you too. <clears throat> you know, I like I see sometimes some Christian they have debate about Calvinist, etc., about punishment, uh, some punishment. I, mean, I believe this is very silly. You know, like when people, they have extra time, they're trying to kill, they don't know what to do with it. I find it very silly because it's not to you if what God will do. That what to God to God. Don't worry. <laughs> Day of judgment will come and we will see what will happen. So those who they like, they start uh, uh, doing a philosophy about what will happen in the day of judgment. Uh, obviously, you are not even focusing on the Lord. You are focusing on something else now. Day of judgment is not my worry. And I will not not my concern too, and not my business. This is God business. You don't tell the judge how he will run his court. Right? So are you debating how the judge will run his court? And you know nothing about his court yet? So some people they have time, they want to kill it. Some people they enjoy an uh, argument just to argue. But there's no point. Uh, <clears throat> All right, anything else? I'm not going to keep this video because, you know, there's no callers, uh, you know. There's not much point, but I enjoy really talking to you, especially if we mention like things which is not necessarily about Muhammad. Who did Adam prophesy according to Islam? I don't know. I mean, the Muslim, they call Adam a prophet, which is very funny. <laughs> I mean, imagine you have only you and your wife and you are a prophet now. 
uh, asked the Muslim what the prophecy, you know, to be prophet, asked him what the prophecy he did. What is the prophecy? Well, very silly, you know. In Islam, everybody is a prophet. Zul Qurnayn is a prophet, Alexander the Great, you know. Names we never heard of them. Allah, he sent 124,000 prophets. If Muhammad, he heard about Joe Biden in his time, they will make him a prophet, you know. If Muhammad, he see uh, like a, uh, a drone, he will say this is Jibreel. He will, add it, he will make a chapter of the drone. This guy, he just adds stories. Yeah. Good for you, my friend from Turkey. Good, good to have you. God bless you. All right. And actually, this is what I like about the internet. I, mean, I believe we are blessed with the internet, even though the, the same internet is used for many people to corrupt their life, to destroy their life. But I believe for us as a believers, it's a blessing because here we go. I met with people from around the world, from everywhere. And uh, I'm really blessed having a huge family. Uh, when when I, when uh, when I say something like, "Oh, I don't feel good," many people of you like send me uh, messages. Are you okay, etc. So I feel the love of people, and I feel how the Lord He blessed us. You know, as a as a family, we never met. You know, like one of you now, he offered me. He have a. Uh, uh, a monitor he want to give it to me but I cannot give him my address to you know but you see this is love I mean he's going to give me a monitor as a gift what return nothing nothing he cannot accept any return from me uh, so God is good and uh, this is what exactly what love is love is you think of somebody how you can help that person and you don't expect from that person anything the second you have expectation the same second we can say you don't have love you don't know what love is expectation is against love uh... Yeah, well, more funny is a was that the Quran using the crucifixion, which is the punishment of the Roman and the Egyptian, as you see, is practicing it. The Roman, the Roman, they used to, to practice this punishment on the Jews. Anyway. <clears throat> uh... When you are visiting Sweden, you did not invite me. <laughs> did you invite me <laughs> and if you invite me you will be sorry I will eat your meal and I will take your bed and you will have an Arab in your house is that a good news <laughs> you know I eat I eat once a day so when I go to a restaurant I don't enjoy eating a restaurant, honestly, because people will be looking at me. I mean, this guy is eating like an elephant, you know, but I don't, you know, you eat maybe three, four meals a day, right? I eat only once. Uh, uh, so I, I'm shy to go to the house of anybody because you might put food on my table. I will not be able to eat it because I would be shy to eat it. You know, I would look like a, like a hungry guy coming from, <laughs> from the hangar land, you know, like I remember once. Uh, I was invited to the house of a doctor, you know. Um, he, he's, he's an Indian. So, he you know, I like, we like bread, you know, Middle Eastern, we eat bread. So, they put the bread in the table, in the corner of next to me. And, you know, it's like the whole case. But this is for me is nothing, really nothing. So, the bread is over. So, I said, do you have bread? He said, you did not put the bread for him? She said, I did. I put the whole case. The second she said the whole case, I don't know what to say now. <laughs> how I can explain how the whole case disappear. <laughs> yeah, so. Uh, yeah, I eat only once a day. Are you married? No, thank God. 
you know, your body, you know, like for some people, if they eat uh, once a day, they will faint, you know, after a few hours if you don't eat. For me, I can stay 24 hours. I can, I can stay easily.